We talked earlier about Tanya Eminger winning her 10th straight fight. She avenges that, I'm not going to call it a loss, but that bizarre fight and bizarre sequence of events against uh, Yana Kunitskaya just a few months ago. She is now the reigning defending once again Invicta Bantamweight champion. She is joining us on the phone, I believe, at the airport right now, so we appreciate her stopping by. Tanya, are you there? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Thanks for, uh, thanks for, are you at the airport, right? Yeah, yeah, about ready to board here, coming pretty soon. Okay, so uh, thank you again for squeezing us in. Um, Can you describe, I mean, this was a weird scene, like I said, because you lost the belt for 13 days, and then you kind of got it back, but no champion wants to get their belt back in that, in that regard. Does it feel like a weight has been lifted off your shoulders here? Yeah, you know, I I definitely, uh, I definitely was waiting for this fight. You know, I think that, um, they're just a little unfinished business and, you know, it took long enough. We wanted to get on the last car, but, you know, I, I know Invicta wasn't prepared to put us on there. They they didn't plan on an outcome like that. So, you know, I'm just happy to be back in action so soon and, and be able to take care of this before it got too, too much. There's too much talk going on. (laughs) What, what, What kind of talk was bothering you? Uh, none of us bothered me. I just got tired of her fans and her coaches and, and her team, just all the stuff they were saying. So, you know, it's uh, it's just always good to shut some people up, you know. Did they, actually, did they actually physically send you the belt back? How, how did you get it back? Um, well, you know, obviously we, we have our own belts. It's not like, you know, when when I lose my belt, my belt's going to go to someone else. That's just going to go home and sit on my shelf until it – you know, memories, but, um, you know, so she actually got an, another belt and I think that, um, I don't, I think maybe she has to return that one or something because she wasn't actually champion. So, wow. You know, I obviously don't want another belt running around and Victor world title running around, you know, in, in somebody's hands that I don't think that, um, truly want it. So, you know, I, I would hope that, uh, everybody would feel the same on that, but you know, it is what it is. I know you said afterwards in the uh, in the cage with uh, Laura Sanko that uh, you can hold your breath longer than she can hold on to a guillotine. But but honestly, now I mean, how tight was that? It, it looked pretty tight. I mean, it looked like this thing was going to come to an end in like thirty seconds. Were you ever considering tapping? No, no, I don't. She wasn't. She wasn't choking me enough to tap. She didn't have. I think her submission attempts throughout the whole fight were. Um, you know, mediocre at best. I knew she just didn't have the actual right technique to finish any of them. So, you know, it's just one of the things where I have to scramble until we get out of that weird scissor position. And, and, uh, you know, and I think neither one of us wanted to give up the, uh, the position. So nobody was willing to let go. And it was awkward for a while. <laughs> yeah. But it was entertaining as well. I mean, it was kind of like this, uh, chess match, go- chess match going on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you didn't seem very happy though with your performance. Have you changed your tune 48 hours later or so? Well, I think I say this every time I fight that I don't feel like I've performed as, as well as I should. But, that you know, I'm talking about I, I go in the gym day in, day out and, and perform at a certain level. And then when the fight comes around, obviously there's a ton of things that, that come into play. You know, the weight cut, the nerves, just everything that comes into play. You know, and maybe you ate something bad or something. But, you know, it's... um. It's just one of them things where I, I see myself performing at a, a much better pace and a much better level and then and then not feeling like I got to execute everything I want to do, you know. So I think I kind of say this every time I fight, but, um, you know, just going back and watching it every time and then, like, how it went down in my head and how it actually went down, and, you know, are two different things, so. Okay, so you mentioned the nerves and you also mentioned, you know, eating things. Um, I remember a few fights ago you actually threw up in the cage and – you did say after this fight that you ate some bad Mexican food and that made you feel a little sick. Do you think it was the food or do, are you just the kind of fighter that, cause even a- afterwards, I think uh, Laura was saying, or someone was saying I've, to you, don't throw up again. So is that like a common thing for you? Uh, I've actually never thrown up in the cage. I've drived a little bit. Okay. I mean, who's adrenaline? If we're, we're talking about fighting, you know, 15, 25 minutes and, and who's adrenaline doesn't make them sick. So I think my adrenaline makes me sick every time, but this time, yeah, man, I just definitely didn't eat the right thing. I think that that was just sitting different, but, uh, other than that, uh, same, same as always. <laughs> so in the cage, you're actually thinking to yourself, right? You're, you're thinking like, Oh man, something's not sitting well with me right now. And that threw you off a bit. Yeah, no, I just felt like I was a little more sluggish than I, I should have been. And, um, you know, like you said, going back here and looking at the tape days later, uh, obviously I think I performed better than I thought I did in my head. You know, I'm like my, my worst, my worst critic, you know, so is myself. So other than that, I mean, I thought it was, I thought it was good. I would have liked to hit her a lot more, but, uh, when you got some kind of scramble going on like that, it's hard to get more than one or two good ones in before, you know, it's from to a different position. 
So I have a lot of respect for you, Tanya, for what you've done thus far in your career and also for what you've said every time that you're asked about the UFC. I mean, you seem to be very proud of being the Invicta champion, and you're not one of these people who says, yeah, this is great, but, you know, I really want to go on to the UFC. Now that you've won 10 in a row, now that you've defended the title a few times, there's no, you're 35. I mean, you can't fight forever. There's no part of you that just wants to see what it's like over there? I mean, I've been wanting to fight the top talent since I started, it just, it's never happened. So, I mean, for me, I, obviously I think, you know, I want to go as far as I possibly can. I think that every fighter does, but at the end of the day, I can't like make anything happen. I just can keep winning fights and, and, you know, they'll bring me over when they, they feel like I'm ready or if they feel like I'm a, uh, you know, sellable enough fight for them or a good enough fighter. I don't know what necessarily the, the circumstances have to be, but, um, right now I can just do nothing but win fights and, and, go from there. I would imagine you're ready because you've been people who have later been signed to the UFC if MMA math means anything. Do you feel like politics or relationships are keeping you out of the promotion? Yeah, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. It just seems like a prerequisite you, you lose to me and then you get signed. So <laughs> <laughs> maybe everybody just wants to fight me for that. Win or lose, they're going UFC. <laughs> You you have said you know a, a few things I think in jest about Sean Shelby who's the matchmaker. Do you regret saying any of these things? I mean, I never said anything that never that wasn't true. Just vice versa for him. You know, uh, we had a conversation and he said certain things about um, the way my performance. He thought my the fighting style was, and, and um, I didn't agree. But other than that, I mean, what's there to really take back? I mean, there there was a real occasion that happened. So, you know, I, I I'm not saying it to helped or didn't help my career, but it obviously lit a fire under my ass because I've done nothing but win since, you know, so. Could, could, for those that don't know, could you tell us what you're talking about? Uh, just, I think it's just old news. Back in the day, we're trying to get signed or whatever. I, I, I've had conversations with them where I, you know, obviously I reached out to them to try to get signed. I didn't understand why. And, you know, some statements were saying that I was a, um, what was it? Uh, shoot, I can't even, hardly remember. But I didn't. Maybe I didn't finish fights, or I didn't. Uh, wasn't a great performance, or something. So um, you know, that definitely lit lit a fire under my ass. So I've been doing nothing but try to win every single fight and, and come out and and put girls away. So you know, I, I definitely uh, stepped up my game to prove something that you know somebody's opinion wrong. But uh, other than that, I mean, that's all I can do is just keep on winning. Do you take pride in the fact that a, a lot of the women that you fought back in the day when M WMMA wasn't um, a cool thing at all, I mean, it wasn't on Showtime, it wasn't in the UFC, a lot of them are retired at this point. And not only are you still fighting, you're thriving, you're a champion. And I think back then maybe people didn't expect that from you. They didn't think that you would be one of these you know, people who would stick around so long and be a champion in your mid-30s. Is that something that you take pride in? Yeah, you know, I think I, I, I just go until people start beating me up. I mean, what's the point in quitting when you're winning? So, yeah, I must still be on top of my game, and I, I feel better than ever. And, and obviously my training's great, and my my gyms are great, great. So, you know, I'm going to go until somebody got my number. <laughs> how, how did you turn things around, though? Was it just simply like finding your groove and training, the right team, the right coaches? Because, it, you know, e even just a few years ago, I don't know if a lot of people expected this kind of run out of you. You know, I think this is what it is. I think I, I think I'm a different kind of fighter, and I think that it took me time to to figure out what works for me. And, and like any sport, you come in and, and there's a right way to do things and a wrong way in people's eyes. Well, the sport was was decently new. You know, what I mean, the sport is evolving too. So I think I just kind of had to find my own way and, and figure out the mistakes I was making. And obviously, my losses have shown that and, and figure out how to make my style work for me. And that's where I think I am. I think I'm really smart about the way I fight, and, and I know my body's going to perform a certain way and my reactions are going to be a certain way. And so I have to learn to, to fit my style in with that and, and make it work. Do you have a sense of loyalty towards Invicta and Shannon Knapp where, you know, they kind of took this chance on you. You were kind of bouncing around different organizations and they gave you this consistent job, this platform, this opportunity to be a champion, and you don't necessarily want to leave them and leave them with a vacated title. Like do you, do you sort of feel that, is that something that you struggle with when considering what you would do if presented with an offer from the UFC? No, I think we're all on the same page there. You know, I think that, um, and one, I, you know, you can see that they, they're having a hard time finding me opponents and, you know, I'm, I'm becoming a costly part of a, of, of a fight when it, when it comes to putting me on cards. 
and aside from that, you know, I, I don't think, I definitely think that they gave me, uh, you know, somewhere to, to grow and an opportunity just at that, just like you said, an opportunity. And mm-hmm. I think that it didn't matter necessarily. It was going to ha- eventually happen. I think that we just didn't have the same opportunities. We didn't have the promotions. We didn't have anything. These girls today just get to jump right in and they got evicted and they got UFC and they got all these, they can be on any top card on TV, you know what I mean? But they didn't have to go through the struggles trying to find these cards. You know, we didn't, we didn't have nowhere to fight, you know, we, we were struggling. So when it, before Invicta came around, I mean, that's hundreds of jobs that, that Invicta gave everybody opportunities. So not just me, you know, so I'm just happy to be a part of the promotion. That's for sure. And, and definitely, uh, the holder bill is, is definitely, uh, you know, worth talking about. Does it bother you when it seems like Bellator and the UFC push women who are not as experienced as you, but maybe have a certain look that they think will appease or appeal to the crowd a little more, that they, they try to push pretty girls, younger girls, things like that? Does that bother you? I mean, it's always bothered me. I mean, I'm, I am I work hard for, for whatever I got, and, and same thing in wrestling and now in this sport, and I, I just think that, you know, the recognition comes from people that got the power, I guess, so they can make anybody a star, but these, these kids aren't, like, they're hype trains, man. They don't they don't know how to fight like they can sell a pay-per-view, you know, so I don't know. It sucks, but nothing I can do. Is it I can't har- control it. Is it hard for you to watch that? Well, yeah, I mean, I think that everybody thinks I got a chip on my shoulder. I, I get to watch all these kid, people that I beat run around me and get better paydays and get on bigger cars and, and do all these things that I, I haven't got to do. So I think that, uh, you know, it sucks definitely putting, putting a different sales, sales tag on them than you are me. I think that, um, at the end of the day, don't we just want to see good fights? Do you avoid watching it? Or like, are you the kind of person that tunes in regularly to other promotions? And when those fights are on, does it bother you so much that you would not watch it? No, I don't. I really don't watch MMA that often anyway, okay. uh, except for, you know, if the girls are fighting, I'll watch a little bit of that. But for the most part, I don't really watch it. I I compete in it. I get enough every day at the gym. Yeah, <laughs> I can understand that. By the way, when are we going to see you go back to doing interviews? I remember the first time I met you was in Stockton. You were doing the post-fight interviews for a pro elite. Do you remember that? Yeah, man, I had, I had a good time. I Those thought I put on some pretty good interviews, you know what I mean? But opportunity, man, these promotions got to give me opportunity <laughs> to do something like that. Cute. Those were great. I think I think you, you you had a few beforehand just to kind of loosen up a little bit, right? And it helped. Uh, that, yeah, they they gave me more than a few. Oh, like give this girl whatever whatever she wants. <laughs> Who's that? Pro elite? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. They were actually like, helping you. Out. Any kind of, yeah, yeah. They they I think they embraced their personalities. Yeah, it would be great to see you do that. Maybe for Invict on the side. I'm not trying to take Laura's job away, but. Uh, I thought you were, I mean, it, it made for fun interviews. You didn't want those cookie cutter yeah, interviews. Yeah, definitely. It would be nice to do that again. Here I am yeah, trying Laura to get you some work opportunities. <laughs> Laura probably puts in a little more work to figure out what's going on in everybody's career than I do. That's I fair. Play catch up there. <laughs> but, but you're sort of, uh, you're, you're not afraid to ask certain questions and maybe that makes for a little more of a fun interview. Yeah, yeah definitely. I agree. I agree. When do you want to return to action? Get up a little. Not, not interviews, uh, but fighting action. Oh, as soon as possible. I hate sitting out. I hate this twice a year stuff. I want to. I want to fight every couple months. Do you have a, a, a like a sort of end date when you want to stop fighting, or are you going to go as long as you can? Yeah, yeah. Until I guess until either somebody starts beating me up, or or this weight cut gets to be too much because I hate cutting weight. Oh, really? <laughs> well, one forty five is a, is you know sort of the weight class du jour. Would you rather fight at one forty five if you could? No, definitely. I think that 135 is where I'm at. I just like to eat and get fat, so sure, you can't change that. Um, what's the favorite post-fight meal that you that you like to have? <sighs> post-fight. I don't know. I'm a sandwich person, so I like cold sandwiches. That's your exciting meal that you get fat on? Cold sandwiches? Not even warm? Yes. Not even panini? Yes, it's super yummy. Super yummy. No, no, I'm not a panini person, really. Just a cold sandwich? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's more my style. Okay. Um, yesterday, did your brother compete in a wrestling tournament? No, oh, my nephew did. Your nephew. Uh, how would he do? Yeah, yeah. He got he got second in state. Wow. Yeah, he did good. How old is he? He's amazing. Uh, he's 14. Wow. Okay. And when you go to these tournaments, do people recognize you? Uh, no, no, no. I got this weird group of fans that follows me all over the world. <laughs> doesn't matter where I fight. <laughs> you like that, right? Yeah, yeah. I like, I like my fans. They're definitely unique. I have a good group. Everybody's down there. It's my humor. Yeah. 
By the way, why does your uh, T-shirt have a, a picture of uh, you flipping, you know, people off? I don't know where that came from. It's just a picture. Is 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 that, is that like, no, is no, no, no. You know, you know, I've been doing that for years. Yeah, so but like, I think it's just is there a message there, or is it just like your thing? No, I think it's just my thing. Okay, all right, fair enough. I get away. I get away from it every once in a while, but you know, I think it's just my thing. Um, and, and finally, do you see anyone, we were talking about this earlier, do you see anyone at 135 in Invicta that is kind of on your radar right now? Oh, that would be a fun fight. Oh, this is someone that I'd like to fight. No, I'm, I've never been that one to call out anybody or, or give a crap really who I fight. I, I just, uh, I'll fight anybody they'll put in front of me and, and anybody they, you know, feel like wants to fight me. I definitely respect them enough to fight them. So let's do it. If I, if I made you a bet that this time next year, you will have had at least two UFC fights. Would you take that bet? Oh, I, I'm, I, man, I don't know. I think every year I go in this thinking it's time. They're going to, you know, they're going to give me this opportunity. I've won too many fights. It's time, yeah. it's time. And then I get disappointed. So I, I kind of step away from thinking about all that and, and not even worry about it anymore. Well, I think it it's time. It does, if it doesn't, then. Let's make it happen. I think so, too. It would be a crime. There you go. There's the first time I see you actually acknowledge <laughs> It's about time. Let's go. Let's get a little vocal about this. Yeah. It would be a crime yeah. if you don't get a shot in the UFC. Ten in a row. You, you fought them all. You have beat many of them. What are we waiting for at this point? Well, no, man. They want me to get real old, so I can't <laughs> compete. But they're wrong, man. I'm going to keep on going. <laughs> I'll right. be that 60-year-old out there still beating in 20s. Um, well, I appreciate the time. I appreciate you coming on before your flight. And again, congratulations on uh, the big win on Saturday. And, and good luck fulfilling that dream. I, I hope it happens sooner rather than later, Tanya. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. There she is, Tanya Avenger, triple threat, they call her. Kind enough to join us before she uh, boards a flight, I do believe, back home. I think it's, uh, it's about time she gets that shot in the UFC.